there's like this whole calculation that happens at can of how long your standing ovation is apparently mm. and i had no idea what was going on because it's the first time i was there i want to get to that seven minutes first you know i have a feeling that when you put seven as in an odd number it just sounds more credible you don't say six you don't say you don't yes. say eight you say seven yes. was it really seven that's what I was told. I don't know. I wasn't. I wasn't. You're, I didn't have too, a watch like, or any pockets for phone. Right. You're too overwhelmed by the moment. Weren't yeah. You? It was. It was. Were you like teary eyed? Yeah. A bit? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I was crying like a baby the entire week. Hi, I'm Sunny Leone, and you're watching me on Sit with Hit List on Midday. Hello and welcome to Sit With Hitless, our completely unscripted podcast and print conversation series. With me is actor Sunny Leone. Hi. Thank you so much, Sunny, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, just to put a timeline to this conversation, you've just returned from Cannes. Yes. You've had your film playing at Cannes. Yes. Uh, clearly, that was a film that everyone was talking about, even here back in India. I hope uh, so. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, there's, this, there's that moment where you guys get up. Uh, after the screening and everyone's clapping and it's a standing ovation, yeah. right? Yeah. And everyone said seven minutes. I don't know who did the calculation for seven minutes. Was so it seven there's, minutes? Yeah, there's like this whole calculation that happens at can of how long your standing ovation is apparently. Hmm. And I had no idea what was going on because it's the first time I was there. But I was shocked. Everybody's on their feet and they're clapping for us. And I mean, you just don't know how to respond hmm. other than with just so much emotion because you're like, wow, this place is filled you saw if you saw how many people fit in this room and what it looked like it's overwhelming i don't even think that i've ever been to a theater in my life that was this big um, mm. ever it's you know i mean it's surprising that you've never been to Cannes before I and mean, everyone goes to Cannes. it seems whether or not they have the film you're the <laughs> rare one who actually went <laughs> with a film to can as you can just yeah. walk in the red carpet or yeah, preening as it were um <laughs> like a peacock i mean uh, in that sense one i want to get to that seven minutes first you know i have a feeling that when you put seven as in an odd number, it just sounds more credible. Like there was a movie that came out recently called Banda, okay? And that has a massive uh, uh, sequence in the end, which is a courtroom sequence. And everyone's saying it was seven minutes long too. So oh. I think the seven minutes is something that you say, you don't say six, you don't say, you don't yeah. say eight, you say seven. Yeah. Was it really seven? That's what I was told. I don't know. I wasn't. I wasn't. You, I didn't have too, a watch like, or any pockets for phone. Right. You're too overwhelmed by the moment, weren't yeah, you? Yeah. It was. It was. Were you like teary eyed? Yeah. A absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. I was crying like a baby the entire week. No shit. Seriously. Yeah. It was very. It was a really emotional trip, um, because there's there's two sides of it, right? Mm. For myself, mm. which is one. Uh, the film, hmm. which I'm so happy and so proud that I could be a part of, and um, directed by someone like Anurag Kashyap, hmm. and then Raul did an amazing job. So it's so proud of the film, and you know the entirety of it and what it represents. And then there's my journey, hmm. and then there's what does Cannes mean to me in hmm. my own personal journey, hmm. which is the most overwhelming part of it all because if you told me when I stepped foot in the big boss house that I 10 years later 11 mm. years later would be walking at the Cannes Film Festival I would have go told you to go so <laughs> 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 I'm like get out of here you <laughs> are out of your mind if you predicted that that was gonna happen I would have thought you were like some crazy man that took some blue pill somewhere and you know is you know, telling me this nonsense so for me it meant so much more because of the crazy journey that I've had. So every interview, every moment, I was, you know, trying so hard to not be full on crying. Mm. There were tears, mm. but trying really hard not to just start bawling my eyes out wow. because it meant it meant so much. It still does, and I think one of the people there, they're like, "Oh my God, she's crying again." I go, "You know what? I had a moment this morning." where you know when i was all by myself and i thought about that comment oh my god she's crying again mm. and i thought i'm okay with that because i never want this moment to end this feeling of this accomplishment and this feeling of feeling proud and this feeling of feeling like i made it this far like mm. i never want that to go away i always wanted to feel like this is the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. So if I cry, I cry, I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the film we're talking about is Kennedy, directed by Anurag Kashyap. Uh, I have to say, I think I first saw you um, 
at the rap party at somewhere in Andheri. Yeah. Uh, Anurag was there, of course, and that's the, when it finished the shoot. I'm like, and that's that's when I first got to know that you're in the film. I'm like, oh wow, like you know, there's there is something that Anurag Kashyap has done throughout yeah. his career, which is work with very hardcore actors. You know, from National School of Drama, where there's a gangs of Vasipur, so many of them, right? I wouldn't put these two together in that sense. How did it happen to you? Anurag sir called me hmm. and... You call him Anurag sir? Like not Anurag, I mean, I don't he's a pretty chill out guy. I don't know, I just, I don't know. You just feel like, I mean, is, yeah. is, it, is it a Bombay thing? Is it a Bollywood maybe, thing? Maybe, I, I, you know what, I grew up in the US in Canada where we didn't call him yeah, no, sir, yeah, well. unless it was your teacher. But when um, you refer to him, do you say Anurag yeah, sir? Yeah, when I'm giving an interview or talking. talk. But when you're talking to him, you call him sir? I don't know. What do I call him? I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to ask him. It's just something that's involuntary that will right, just come right. out. So he called me and he said, I have this film and I want you to come in and audition for this part. And I said, okay, absolutely. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, I think that he was probably, you know, I guess maybe not nervous, but wondering if I would actually come in. And audition for a part, right? You've yeah. been around for long enough. But I have no yeah. issues with that. So right. I think what I've... Um, unknowingly done over the last 11 years is created this bubble mm. where people think that I'm unapproachable or mm. unavailable or won't do things because of maybe how things have gone mm. you know every film has landed on my shoulders mm. um, I've not played a part a part of a film mm. but I'm not the leading person in the film you mm. know so anyway so he called me and he said come in and audition and I got the lines out of him he said at first he said I'm not gonna give you any lines you just come in and read it I was like first of all I haven't done an audition in years so please mm. don't do this to me mm. <laughs> please give me the lines I just don't want the Hindi to be something that's an issue because right. if you ask me to do it in English I, it would just right. come out right. like improv it's not something that's difficult um, so then I went in did the audition and he invited like this he like invited the, crowd, really? the entire office. That's unnerving. It's scary. Yeah. <laughs> to sit in, introduce me to everyone, and then did an audition with Raul. And um, he said, I think that you would be great for this role of Charlie. But then the worst part, he went, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Like they're what do you all think? giving you reviews. Oh my gosh, that was right the now. worst. That was the worst part. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a test, but it's an individual's you know, perspective. So that was very scary. <laughs> but when I was in Cannes, I found out that they pretty much had made up their mind that they uh. wanted me a part of this. They were just seeing if I would show up. <laughs> right. I got this after a couple of drinks, everybody's hanging out, talking. <laughs> I was like, you guys are so evil. <laughs> but I was happy that I got to right. do it either way because right. it did push me outside this comfort zone. Um, because I haven't given an audition in so many years, so... You know, um, I came across one conversation of yours where you've mentioned something to the effect of how you hired an acting coach. Yeah. You were paying $200, $300 an hour to that coach. Yeah, he's expensive. Right, to audition <laughs> for a part. Yeah. And then they gave you the job, but they were going to give you no money for it. Then you were going to travel economy class uh, for the shoot. They take us to that The story. economy class was, that was like... Still okay. No, it's not if okay. You, it's if you think being of like, economy, it's not yeah, okay. it wasn't. It wasn't just that. It okay. was everything across the board. And we're, I'm not talking about some small film. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about a small budget film. Okay. We're not talking about a company or a production house that could not afford these things that couldn't be put into the budget for an artist. So it just seems so unreasonable. But I did pass the audition. You so. Did. For that, I'm very happy about, and I think everything happens for a reason. This is the part where you name the. No, I don't. I wouldn't want to. No. It stays between us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say his the gentleman's film did very very well, and the, this film that I auditioned for, I think, did like average or not so great. So everything happens for a reason. Hmm. But and the film did get made with someone else in it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can you give us more hints? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think it would just be not. 
not good banter. But I mean, you learned something, right? I mean, you you got a coach, and you even if you spend that money, it would have been of some use because you continued acting, and so you know. Yeah. These so are I've hired a, a few different coaches over the years. Okay. And um, worked with either dialogue coaches or acting. Who are coach. these coaches that you worked with? Um, uh, one is name is Ritesh. Okay, Ritesh. Who? He. Um, oh my gosh, his last name. I haven't worked with him sure. in a long time. You probably know him. Right. And then uh, there's there's been one other one that I've worked with. I will give you names later. <laughs> Don't put me on the spot. <laughs> so bad. Um, but it was nice working. Each each of them work completely different. So. Mm. You know, because you were talking about how this impacts your personal journey, and of course, so much of this conversation is going to be about that journey, right? I mean, I genuinely don't think there is anyone, or you'll have to tell me if you know anyone, who started out in the adult film industry and became a mainstream star. Not are, in there, India. Are, there any, are there any other examples of that in no. like showbiz history? Not in India. Not in India? For sure. For sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the US? In are the there US? Examples? I mean, actors you can't think of one right actors away, right? no but personalities entertainers a sure. few yeah like can you give me an example um, can uh, kim kardashian kim paris kardashian. hilton hmm. tommy paris hilton. tommy lee tommy lee yeah there's uh, probably uh, ray j who was with kim i don't know what they i don't know what he's doing but there's a, there's a few but um not not actors not like, mainstream stars in mainstream well those films. are all mainstream stars but, but like not in the film not in the mainstream movie yeah. right in yeah. that sense. Maybe they want said. to. Right, right. Maybe but Kim's doing something this year, I think, with hmm. American Horror Story, I think I read. Right. Who knows? Right. <laughs> the other thing, of course, which is interesting about your story, and there are not that many examples uh, of that, either is someone who moved to India in 2011 and has been around for so many years. Uh, I'm like, hi, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you know, not too many people make that move, firstly, right? Yeah. And second, uh, were you even familiar with Bollywood? You know, another person I can think of is probably Katrina Kaif, right? I mean, she'd seen her first Bollywood movie in 2001, Ahsoka, and in two years' time, she was here. Uh, you know, she worked in Boom, and that's it, Boom, she's like a Bollywood star. Did you ever grow up in Hindi cinema? Did you watch films while you were growing up? Yeah, you watched films okay. growing up, yeah. Of yeah, like you had your favorite stars, and you had your well, favorite I don't movies. know about, like, favorite stars. Okay. So, um, where... We were, my, my parents would go rent like, you know, VHS, right. they, well, some Bollywood right. film. From a Patel store or somewhere. And, right. Yeah, I don't know where they would get, they yeah. would rent like two or three of them. It right. would be on the weekend and my parents would put the movie in, we'd clear the living room, mm. order pizza, mm. sat and watched. My parents, of course, like, I don't think my dad was so much into the songs, so they would fast forward okay. through those. So we weren't either because... You know, we were listening to mainly like Punjabi music or growing right. up, Bangra music right. growing up, and um, and we'd watch the film, and so I understood most of what they were saying because Punjabi and Hindi are similar right. in, in most ways, um, except for you know dialect. So in that way, I watched and I watched. Do you a have few, any memories? Any um, particular films? Kalnaik. Kalnaik, you watched. Okay, that's ninety-three. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Dil. Dil, yeah. I remember. And my mom was crying. I would cry when Amir would cry. Um, that type of thing. But it wasn't something where I was watching it. I was watching it because we were getting to eat in the living room. Right, right. <laughs> and eat pizza on the floor. And then sometimes it would be a camp out and fall asleep after we, you know, right there in the living room. It was, you know, not something of the norm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that was the excitement that was put behind watching a Bollywood so film. So you were allowed to be uh, up till late? Because up till late, right. eating pizza on the floor, right. like fall, passing out in, in the living room, like set the blankets up like a camping, you know, something that goes on when you're camping. <laughs> so it was this whole thing that they created. And I guess that was, you know, when they say it out loud, it's good. So, I mean, in that sense, it's like a diaspora experience, right? I mean, that is the connection that Bollywood has with people who live, uh, people of Indian origin or South Asian origin who live across the world. That's That was really your connection in that sense? Would that yeah, be correct that to say? Yeah, that was my connection, yeah. Did you at any point in time think when you're watching these movies that you would be in one of them at some point in your no, life? No, I was more concerned with, um, you know, growing up in this typical Punjabi home and I wasn't allowed to wear a short skirt. And I say, she's wearing a short skirt. Yeah. How come I can't wear a short skirt? And I live in, you know, we we're in Canada at that time. I go, and they're in India. I go, how come she's allowed to do it and I'm not allowed to do it? Mm. You know, and it was like, 
चुप कर एक थप्पड़ मिल गई सो आई मीन दोज वर दोज वर द थिंग्स दैट वर ऑफ कंसर्न एट दैट एज इट वॉज इंट like bollywood was so a part of our lives that mm. it's not like here where it's, it's in your face right. you know it's right. everywhere especially bombay um, where you live yeah especially especially yeah. here so it was a weekend thing mm. or every two weeks or whatever it was that they wanted you know this that about diaspora communities in general they tend to be even more conservative than the places they came from i know i right? i have a theory on this what is that <laughs> it's like a time warp. Hmm. So, um a family will move. Me I don't know about now. Hmm. Let's say when my parents right, moved. Right. Is they moved their first generation Indians in the US or in Canada and maybe they really miss home. Hmm. So, they take all the all the philosophies of the Indian culture and time warp it to wherever they are they're probably living in the 70s and inside the house mm. it is exactly how it would be if they were living in india at mm. that time and the same philosophies of life and culture and everything gets time warped um and they desperately want to continue this tradition there mm. which is amazing because that's how i that's how i grew up mm. I mean they're trying to hold on to something that probably doesn't even exist yeah. back from where they they're come from. They're creating they're right. creating their own An versions world. of you know like no you have to be a proper Indian girl you have to wear clothes like this or your hair like this though no, gutta this that the other. Um but that's not what happens here mm, at exactly. all. Exactly. Yeah. At all. I'm going to assume that it didn't happen um at that time either. Right, right. I mean uh, Didi Ajay, right? दिल वाले दुल्हनिया ले जाएंगे इस फिल्म में शाहरुख खान एंड काजोल बिगेस्ट हिट्स एवर दैट्स रियली दैट स्टोरी इज इन इट देर इज अ फादर अमरीश पुरी एंड देर इज द डॉटर ऑफ काजोल एंड शी नॉट अलाउड टू वेयर लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स शी नॉट अलाउड टू गो आउट एंड देन इवेंट शी फॉल्स फॉर शाहरुख कैरेक्टर हुज जस्ट दी ऑपोजिट हैविंग ग्रोन अप हैव यू है दैट्स अनदर एग्जाम्पल ऑफ समन हु इज ब्रिटिश एक्चुअली नॉट इवन Indian in that sense, and and made a mark here, and you know made a whole life in the same way that you have. Yeah, I've not met her like in uh, like in a, a proper se- yeah right, a proper yeah, setting. Yeah. yeah. What about Priyanka Chopra? Because that's the reverse story, isn't it? Yeah, Priyanka Chopra. I have from met her, her and spent uh, time to the U.S. and set up a whole like yeah. life there. Yeah, it's amazing what she's done. I have spent time with her. And did you exchange notes on how, what is it for her to move from here to there? Which you is know, the when two people meet, it's yeah. you don't sit and go so. <laughs> That's what you do tell in an interview, me, yeah. Tell me what was your transition <laughs> like? <laughs> that so that conversation not happening. Uh right now the conversations happen about children or mm. you know I just went and saw her uh, premiere sit- Citadel. Mm. Um but <laughs> that's not the conversation right. that's happening. I'm going to take you back to when you moved your uh Sunny M. Of course there was the big boss that you came to this to the city for and it was a hugely popular show. uh there after of course you got your film contract uh with Mahesh Bhat but did you understand the level of popularity you had in India until you actually landed in the city no 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 idea no like i'm i'm, I'm i guess this is this is oh, there was social media then so you would see like people write to you yeah, or say things to you you of- had some some clue right yeah but not not to the level of when i actually landed so when i landed here um it was myself and Daniel hmm. and then one security person we brought and uh when the team came in to the airport they said listen there's not a lot of people outside it's going to be totally fine Daniel you go he, he wanted to get the bags and then Jeej and I were going to walk out his name's Jeej hmm. so Jeej and I walk out for one second it was like <laughs> we were like holy <laughs> what's happening here and then they rushed us back inside the airport said wait here let us get this organized i was like you just said there there were just there was nobody out here like you know it's not a big deal and then they got you know all the military guys at the airport that are always there wow. all like making a human chain so we can walk through but it was in, it was insane it was crazy it was a and crazy thing been to india before that uh, before? no i been i've been here um many not many times but enough times to right. to know everything but i wasn't sunny then i was just myself the recent two times before that i came to scatter my parents ashes mm. and then the time before that i was really you know it was maybe like 10 11 years old so i've been here mm. i you know traveled but around but not as sunny day right no yeah no 
interesting that you said not as Sunny Leone because there, there's there's the Sunny Leone which is uh, which is the public figure, and then there is Karanjit yeah. uh, Vora, Kaur Vora, who's who's you. Yeah. I'm trying to hope. I'm hoping that that Karanjit Vora also comes out in this conversation. Firstly, why are you called Sunny Leone? You know, I'll tell you why I'm asking you this question. Recently, I was watching this uh, series called uh, Charlotte, uh, Queen Charlotte, and um, I was falling off to sleep. And so you know, it's a mix of fiction and fact. Uh, and there is the character who is from Sierra Leone, and I heard Sunny Leone in my head. <laughs> so like, that's and that's when I thought, like, oh, is she like named after this African country? Yeah. Is the second part of the name? Uh, why call it Sunny Leone? Um, when I was in the U.S., I was doing an interview for a magazine, and um, they said, "What do you want your name to be?" Hmm. I was like, couldn't think of anything. Remind. At that moment, I was working at a tax and retirement firm, and I worked for like the HR department, the accounting department, another agent. I helped with all these things, and then I also was a receptionist. So I was doing the interview um, in this place, and I knew I had to get off the phone soon and, and get back to work. Yeah, exactly, because yeah, yeah. I would get yeah. caught. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they said, "What do you want your name to be?" I said, uh, "You just make my first name Sunny, hmm. and then you can pick the last name." Hmm. And really, Sunny is my brother's nickname. His okay. name is Sandeep hmm. Singh, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> and uh, we call him Sunny. Hmm. And uh, my mom hated that I named myself Sunny after your brother. <laughs> yeah, he's like, out of all the names, that's the name you pick. <laughs> I was like, yeah, just what came it came to my mind. So yeah. that's Sunny. What about Leonie? Like Leonie, it, the magazine it, had picked, and then I just kept. They it. just decided to put Leonie yeah, against your name. The owner of the magazine was Italian. Okay. And that was it. Ah, Sergio Leone. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's actually not the country. It's the, it's the Italian last name. Yeah. They just decided to put it. And they told you about it that that's what we're going to call you in the magazine. No, interview? I just saw it. And oh was, wow! <laughs> I was like, okay. And you don't care? I didn't at that time. I didn't know where my life was. I was 19 years old. Wow. You know, like one of the things that happened when you moved to India, right? And of course, there's far greater meme culture now than there was then. But there'd be all these uh, Sunny Leone jokes. Did you, yeah, like, I know. Did you see those? I've seen so many Sunny Leone. Like, I think they're still so happening. Do you remember any which, is, which, which you found really funny? Funny? No. Lots of them were very <laughs> crazy. They were pissing you off, basically. Well, you know, the thing is, is my husband's humor and my humor are very different. Okay. So he thinks all the jokes are really funny <laughs> because he's looking at it from a different perspective. And it's not him, by the way. <laughs> and so then when I see the jokes, I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. It's funny. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, like there's one I know where uh, if Sunny Leone married uh, Sunny Deol, then both would be Sunny Deol. Yeah. You've heard that one, right? Yes, I've heard <laughs> okay. that one. You know, I mean, I have to <laughs> say like for conversations like these, usually what one tends to do is also see what the person has said in the past, in their past interviews and stuff. But in your case, because you've been so open about your story, there's so much material out there that need not be a conversation. It could be a, a documentary film about you, mostly yeah. Sunny. Uh, that since 2016, I remember watching it. Then there's an entire series um, Karanjit Korvora, the untold yeah. story of Sunny Leone, which by the way is on Z5. I tried to watch it first season, I caught it. Second season, I'm not able to watch it because it's just impossible interface. But I have seen most uh, most of that show and it's beautifully done. In so those are all my real stories. Right. The location is different. Yeah. The clothes are different. Yeah. Um, but the story itself, I fought tooth and nail that the stories would be real. Um, because at that, I'm extremely emotional about my family, my parents. So I, if I was going to say yes to this, it had to be a real story. Mm. It can't be something that you guys just want to make up um, just for, you know, the sensationalizing, right. you know, a story. So in that way, I wanted it to be true. I mean, there are certain portions of it I thought were extremely moving. Uh, especially the loss of your parents. I mean, yeah. one you've dealt with in the first season, and the second is this, the father is in the second season. I want to get into that a little bit later, but I thought what was really funny on the show was actually the bit with a character called Rusty, <laughs> who's clearly Russell Peters, right? And who you dated um, for some time. Did he actually turn you into a character in his stand up comedy? Yeah, you have to see it. Yeah, I don't know if he does it now, but right. you know, I think I'm not. I'm not upset about it. He not can say whatever he wants. Yeah, 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 it's okay. It's totally fine. <laughs> if it makes people laugh, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, he he did. It was really funny. How long were you guys dating? 
like a hot second only. <laughs> 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 it wasn't for very long. It was a mistake. You know what? I genuinely believe that him and I were such good friends and mm. we had so much fun together. Mm. And everywhere that I would travel in the U.S., there were a lot of places that he was at because he was doing a show. And we would just meet up and have fun and drink and go out and just be really silly and really funny. And then all of a sudden we messed it up by going out on a date. Mm. That's so true for so many of such... Uh... I know, but I really do wish that we were still friends. He went this way, I went this way, which is totally fine. But if I ever did see him again, I would be so happy to see him. Even it's, if he did talk shit in his stand-up yeah. comedy, I don't care. It's okay. So, so did your did your husband now husband Daniel? Did he beat the shit out of Russell Peters? No, because well, that's there in this. That's in the series that he goes and he said, you know what the hell, you know, you're making a joke out of Sunny, and then whacks the shit out of him. Yeah, yeah, I think that was sensational. Okay, <laughs> that one. I'm, my family stories are true though. Um, <laughs> when I dated Russell for like this really short amount of time was this around the same time I met Daniel mm. it's so then you know it would be really weird if like I was still friends with Russell but I was just dating him and I didn't continue to be with him but was with Daniel that's like weird mm. mixing of weirdness so I had to drop the friendship <laughs> sad about it <laughs> right 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 the other thing of course is um, in terms of you know, sort of homeworking for this particular conversation. Uh, I only went to one interview that you've done, which okay. is also a big part of that series that you did, which is this gentleman called Bhupendra Chauve, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, and he kept trolling you uh, in that conversation. Yeah. So, I mean, one, I know that you said something to the effect of how Amir Khan may not want to work with you, but you would you would want to, but that's the nature of the reality of things. And of course, Amar Khan later said, of course, I'd want to work with you. Mm -hmm. did, did, did that conversation lead to a lot of people calling you up because you, yeah. you came across as someone who felt vulnerable, but did, did that happen? Like a lot of people got in touch with you after that there were, chat? There were, yeah, there were a few people that after they heard about it or saw it, they also were, you know, got that cringe and reached out and said hello, which was really nice. Who were these people? Um, Amir was one of them. They called you Mist up. Yeah, Mr. And what did he say? Anil Kapoor was one of them. Mm. Um, I think Rithik Roshan was one of them. Um, Sonam mm. as well. There were a few. There were a, a few people, and all of them just saying, you know, like proud of you, you know, be strong. That type of in in that type of zone. That conversation. Right. So you know what I did after watching that interview was I got into Chat GPT and I said uh, a question. So there is Rajdeep Sardes. I was an, is an extremely uh, fantastic broadcaster. So I said, uh, what would Rajiv Sadesai ask Sunny Leone, right? In terms of a bunch of questions. I mean, they're all, Chad Ghibli is not going to take our jobs. And they're all <laughs> pretty crappy questions. But there's one that I thought maybe I should ask from what, according to Chad GPT, uh, Rajdeep might ask you, which is, if I get it right, that you've faced a lot of criticism, backlash from some sections of society for your past work. How do you deal with such negativity? I just don't deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are certain things, yes, like if you had to peel back all the layers of card I have up, um, yeah, of course it hurts your feelings because you don't want people um, to say such rude, nasty things. Um, but for the most part, you just, I have broken it down as to they don't know me, I don't know them. They're entitled to say whatever they want. It's completely okay. And, um, and just leave it at that. So I have this thing about social media and um, all these like different people that talk shit. Mm. And for me, I'm thinking, okay, they've taken their time, they've gone onto my social media mm. page to write something nasty. Mm. And then what does that troll do afterwards? He doesn't leave my page. Mm. He keeps doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, who's the loser here? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, not just that, they're just they're there on my page more. They're adding in the Google searches. They're adding in this like, you know, when you do like Sunny Leone analytics, it's amazing. So thank you <laughs> for talking shit. So I kind of broken it down in my head like this. And, you know, I can't take what they take, you know, say seriously um, because maybe they don't even take themselves seriously. Maybe they're so upset with their own lives and they're just unhappy people that 
they have to say something bad. And they're not only saying it about me. They're saying it about so many Everyone, people. Right? They're Everyone working through the list. It's like, um, we all know this, like, either auntie or uncle that has a call list. Mm. And every day, whenever they're sitting, they make their call list and they talk to and they chat to all their friends and their families and make way through the list. That's like trolling, you know, not the same, mm. but um, that philosophy of going through the list of all the people they need to go say all these bad things about. So it's not just me and you can't, you can't take it personally. Well, are you still the most searched person on Google? I don't know. I mean, multiple years Let's you Goog have been, right? Let's Google it. Let's Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Daddy, I, I totally agree with you. Like, for instance, when you came to India, and of course, we spoke about how you landed and, and the madness that you saw. But in general, uh, over the years, have you like seen even greater madness? Like, I remember seeing one video or was it an image of you in Kerala? Yeah. And they were like, what? the hell like there, yeah. were, there were millions of people yeah. can you, can you remember this yeah what i was will this? never forget this moment yeah, yeah tell, tell, tell so me we were supposed to go it was a cell phone company mm. and they called me out to do an appearance like we've like done ribbon, one something. million of these you know in your career mm. and i was like okay great and we start driving down this street where Which that town big was this? it was in kochi okay okay um and we're driving down this street and you see like lots of people, but you don't know how deep it is mm. because you're sitting in the car. Mm. So you can only see like whatever you can see this way, but you can't see from above. And um, we're going through, we go through slowly and we're like, holy, like there's a lot of people here. Okay, great. But then I get out of the car and I get onto this tiny, this tiny stand was like from here until the end of that table is how big this like stage was it was tiny that's when we're like take your breath away oh my gosh look at all these people there are people hanging on the bus they were like yelling my name and I'm like I don't even understand what's happening and I was like again like it literally takes your breath away to see so many people standing there for you and I don't think that's on the same scale of maybe some of these huge artists when you see them in these big stadiums how they must feel but at that moment, I was like, this is unbelievable. And then we get out. The police were amazing. Um, they, there were no issues at all. Everybody was well behaved and it was awesome. Then when we were in the car is when I saw that photo. Mm. I had no idea either. Mm. And then I was like, holy, <laughs> this, is in, this is nuts. So it was a really, it was like a really amazing moment to see how many people had come out. And there's so many, like, everybody analyzes why were there so many people mm. there. Mm. And one was that uh, there was some other rally happening or there was this happening. But everybody was screaming my name. So how? I don't understand. Like, they all left that person. They come here. That's impossible <laughs> that they would want to come see me and not for whoever oh, they're, for the rally, right? yeah, like, su you know, supporting. So, I don't know. It was whoever promoted that event amazing <laughs> you should hire that person always they probably put up a front page ad and say sunny is going to be here right something like that i mean how I will the no whole idea. city know I have that you're no going to be in this in, in town i don't know and exactly where you're going to be i don't know it's crazy it's crazy and like if you when you look at the photo and you see the tiny stage literally from here to there it's nuts does it get unnerving for you sometimes when when something like this happens i mean from a safety point of view um i don't know i feel like if something's gonna i don't know <laughs> something's gonna happen is gonna happen but the police were really amazing our security was really amazing and i have to i really do have to put my trust into the people that are there that we've hired and analyze each situation i think sometimes um like a a lounge or a club event something that's more dangerous mm. than what was happening in the streets of Kochi mm. that was more that was safer you know so you each situation is different you said this before I mean there is there is America and of course everywhere in the world you go to and you can't you know you can't blame people for looking at you and it is what it is but in India it just becomes strong staring <laughs> and that's freaking <laughs> tough right? I know. do you face that a lot yeah <laughs> you're gonna do one of these <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just have to like hide because they just. They you just block it. You know, like um, uh, race horses, mm. and they have those blinders mm. <laughs> on in a race horse because you know if they see the other horse, they'll get spooked. So it's kind of like that. You get like blinders on. You find where you need to go. Your mission. And that's it. 
I don't know. I guess you get used to it. And you've always been used to it. I think most people. Th- it's not just me that people stare at. I think that people just stare in general. I think it's part of the it's culture. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I have this thing where I say hi to everybody, but then most people don't say hi back. That's worse. <laughs> <laughs> After all the staring, I'm like, hello, good morning, hello. No one responds. Not no one, but lots of people don't respond. The other day, I was just shooting somewhere, and I asked a question. I was like, or I said hello, and they're just like, ignore me. <laughs> to another direction. I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's because they, they're probably in awe of you, right? I mean, they, they see you and they're like, whoa, like we actually saw right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably what's respond. happening. Respond. Say hello. Yeah. Something. Hello, Sunny. Just, how yeah, are you doing? Yeah, hi. <laughs> hi, how are you? <laughs> that's, that's better than just staring and then once I say hello, they just <laughs> run away. <laughs> I mean, also, like, as you rightly put it, uh, these are also your audiences. These are the these are the reasons why, you know, you could be uh, for a cell phone company op- doing an opening thing or you could be the number of people visiting you on, on, on Google and stuff like that, right? I mean, has it been, like, in terms of the commerce aspect of it, has it been an amazing experience for you here in India? Absolutely. Yeah. 110%. Yeah. I think that India is one of the most amazing emerging markets in the world. I think that literally if you know your craft or understand your business that you really can succeed here. Um, Yes, there might be one million of the same happening, but I really do believe that like creating good relationships and like being persistent here can work. It's not unattainable where I feel like certain places like like the US I find more difficult oh, why did you say for that? small businesses okay. than um, you know than here. Here you can take a small business, price it properly and you can make great money. There you can start a like a small mom and pop store, small business and either A the government makes it extremely difficult for you or it's just not enough people, you know, like it's just different. It's, a it's market. very, it's very, very different here. You literally, I feel like you can open up whatever it is that you want, either food, beverages, cosmetics or clothes, anything you want. And you literally can make so much money. If you went to any of the stalls, like here in Bandra, there's mm-hmm. this area that sells us chapels and clothes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I bet, road, right? I bet if you ask them without them being scared, to tell you the exact amount of money they make, that they make a shitload of money (laughs) selling clothes and chapels and bags and whatever it is that they're selling. I can guarantee that they make so much money, it's insane. And they make more money than a small business owner in the US uh, than here. Do you have a head for business? Are you you good with numbers? Are you a person who who can see like a commerce through? Because you have have a bunch of businesses yourself, right? Yeah, I do. So between myself and Daniel, we work really hard. I think that having the cosmetics and production and fragrances and all these things helps there be other avenues of income using, you know, the leverage of my name to help propel it forward. So that in that way, it's great because I get to follow my passions of, you know, cosmetics and whatever else I want to do. And be able to make those dreams come true because first and foremost I was always into business and I was always working and I was always starting my own thing or doing my own thing as a child and as a teenager so in that way I'm able to fulfill those dreams you know like what were these businesses that you got into when you were a teenager um like I started (laughs) when I was little I used to sell lemonade down the street. I mean, really little. I'm right, talking right. about seven, eight, yeah, nine yeah. years old. I saw that in the series. And, yeah. and then that's how you bought your the clothes that you wanted to wear because your mom yeah. wouldn't allow you to. No, yeah. Right. So it's very true. <laughs> um, uh, to shoveling snow in the wintertime, I was the annoying kid that went door to door in the block hmm. um, trying to sell something. Hmm. Um, when I got into the adult industry, I learned how to build my own website, taught myself HTML, video editing, photo editing, built my own affiliate program at that time. I learned how to market it on my own. I learned how to do like so many things. And I knew that at a young age, as like 16, 15, 16, 17, I wanted to own my own business. I just, at that age, didn't know what it would be. Hmm. Um, so everything just evolved into what it was. That is so cool. That's crazy. 
what do you do with your money? What do you have? Do you have any particular luxuries, guilty Nothing. pleasures? Do you have a private island which will you know, cost I the want same Daniel, as a Bandra I want apartment. Daniel to buy me, <laughs> 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 like in Maldives where we always vacation. Uh, that would be nice. Um, what do I do with my money? Uh, private jet? No. Do you have a private jet? No. No. Okay. No, I don't even think I'd want one. No. Why? I was I was part on a plane once, one of these private planes, hmm. and uh, went through a crazy air pocket. We were in Latour, out of all places. We were going to Latour because in Latour there's no commercial um, mm. airports. Mm. They're only private. So then we were like, okay, let's take a private plane. We were in this tiny dinky. Like everybody thinks a private plane is so amazing. Yeah. That's okay, but let me let me just break it down <laughs> to you. The things you see online, half of it is probably fake. <laughs> you know, like in Los Angeles, you can go rent like a tiny little studio that has the big uh, private plane seat and the window, and you can sit there with your champagne and take your photo. That's what most people are doing. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what you guys think. <laughs> um, so we're in this plane, and then we go through this air pocket. And then from that moment forward, we said we're not going to go on a private plane again because that was really scary. I mean, there were two pilots in the front. One was this Sardar, and he's going, why go to G, why go to G, why go to G, why go to G? <laughs> and we're like, dude. <laughs> My husband is, f he's like going to freak out because he's yelling at the manager who had booked the job. <laughs> and I'm going, I'm looking at him going, do not lose your shit right now. <laughs> I go, everyone's here. Do not scare everybody here with being really loud. And I have one security guard. He's in the back. I can't do the position because I'm wearing a skirt. But he had one leg, one foot here, one foot here in between the seats. And one hand here and one hand here, and he's freaking out. Everybody's freaking out. And then, you know, God has different plans for you in life. And exactly one month later, we got a call saying uh, we were matched with a little girl for adoption, and she's from La Tour. Oh wow! <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. So, so I called up. I called up my manager and I said, Rajani, I need you to uh, look up a private charter. And he's like, are you out of your effing mind? <laughs> he's like, why? I go, don't ask me questions. Just book me the same plane again. Just I'm look up private charters to Latour because I was on a tight schedule. I had to go to the U.S. right mm. after I was done shooting. I was shooting a Jim Corbett and got home. The next day had to go to Latour. Then that next night I was flying back to the U.S. So I didn't have a lot of time to drive. I think it's like eight, ten hours or something. Mm. He's like, you're out of your mind. Made him book it. We all had, we all took the charter <laughs> to yeah, there. You go with I the took my or something. <laughs> you know, I, I, <laughs> I took my, I did take my doctor because okay. <laughs> it was the first time we were meeting Nisha, mm. and I just wanted to make sure like everything medically was okay and mm. she's fine. Um, so then we went there all together, flew there, no issues. No flew issues. back, no issues. Then we had to pick her up. From mm. Latour again, we needed again. <laughs> <laughs> again we needed the plane for Latour and Latour is like Wait, you and Latour man <laughs> and the private I'm jet <laughs> forever connected with Latour <laughs> in the most amazing and not so amazing way. That's incredible. Yeah. Of course, you've been a mom. So I will never buy. You asked about money. No, I will never buy the jet. I will never buy a plane. I don't even want to reserve a seat. You know, like timeshares. <laughs> it's not. I'm not interested. I want to fly on a normal commercial plane. If I have to sit in the background, I have to sit in the background. I don't care. <laughs> Just not private. But do you have a guilty pleasure though? Something that you splurge on and that others maybe your husband doesn't get it. Like why are you spending on this? Amazon. Okay. <laughs> What, you're going to buy Amazon from Bezos? No. What's up? <laughs> Not buy Amazon. Like all of it? No. You know, I don't really purchase, like, do big purchases. Okay. I, you know, I'm like that um, plow horse <laughs> 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 on a farm hmm. that just keeps working. Hmm. And um, I, I'm lucky because my husband buys really nice stuff for us. But uh, we spent... We spend on our house here. We spend on our cars here. We save our money. We have three kids. Mm. You know, I think a lot of it will go to them. <laughs> right, right. So. Where did you guys buy a house? In, um, in, in Andheri? Yeah. Okay. Was that a big change for you? Because this is a tough city to live in. Bombay is not even easy for Indians. I mean, in terms of real estate, in terms of infrastructure. Was that something that really like, like wow, like 
I didn't even, did I sign up for this because it's it's not an easy city. I love this city. So mm. for me, it's not, it's not difficult. <laughs> and when we were looking for homes, uh, one of the builders mm. we know very well, we stayed in one of his flats um, in another building for a long time. Mm. So we had a really nice relationship with him. And he f found out we were looking to buy a flat, but it wasn't in his building. And he said, absolutely not. Come see, the, <laughs> come see these flats again. And um, we went, we looked at it again and, you know, said, okay, fine, let's do it. And that was it. You feel Indian now after so many years. I, you know, I have an American accent, but I'm so Indian. Really? <laughs> Don't judge me because of my accent. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not a very I strong accent either, actually. It's not, it's, it's you know, I mean, you look at Bai, you know, there, there are other American accents. Yeah, yeah, accents. I've gone Bai like, for the last yeah, 11 yeah. years. More, more than that, right? Yeah, way more than that, yeah. But you do, you do feel like a, like a localized person in India now. Like, you I feel love like, it. Yeah? I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Really? And I mean that. Like, and I never want to live in the U.S. I never want to live in Canada. I don't want to live in any other country, at all. Like zero percent. Wow. So this but is where you're going to retire and and live. Yeah. This was. Yeah. Well, it would again, be nice. For a retired life is going to be pretty tough, though. You'll probably like get some farm in Latour, maybe. No, no. I don't want to live on a farm. <laughs> I want to live in the city. Okay. I want to live in this buzz of of Mumbai. Hmm. I love it. The only other place I'd want is like, you know, vacation home, maybe in the Maldives somewhere, or maybe a vacation home in Dubai. It's so close by. But other than that, I have no interest in the U.S. I know my husband does not like when I say that, but um, I just don't. Hey, it must be, must be harder for him, right? I mean, you, he's yeah. more daisy than me. What are you saying? I swear. No shit, seriously. <laughs> yeah. How did that happen? Like, I don't know. I mean, All of a sudden, he's like, you know, comes, says like the craziest things. And I'm like, oh, okay, wow, you are more Indian than me. <laughs> like what? Like what <laughs> What makes you think, uh, oh, that's very daisy uh, thing to do? Does he nod his head a lot? Like, does yes, he, like, he yeah. does do that. They say no, no, a lot in he'll, the end of the sentence. Yeah, like, or he'll sometimes he'll go time pass. He'll say the word time pass. Time pass yeah. <laughs> That's only half a tear. Yeah, it is an Indian word. Or just only. <laughs> just only. <yeah. laughs> um, or one day he'll be on a kick where he's only eating like Indian food and chicken tikkas and all this like stuff. And I'm like, dude, who are you? <laughs> um, or you know, he'll he does the nod, and. Um, he likes going to Gudwana's. <laughs> like he's like very simulated. And was he's he just really white? <laughs> but he's yeah, yeah, can't have that. <laughs> but when 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 you guys moved, was was it tough for him at least? Because it's I mean you're moving for work, and I get that. Yeah. And of course he's working with you, and you sort of have a business together. But it's a new, it's a completely different world for him, right? I think we had the same struggles of figuring out. Uh, I have this area, the wheel is turning, hmm. but nobody knows how. Hmm. <laughs> so, it's just um, happening on its own. Yeah. It's just how it's a buzz. You can't, I don't know how to explain it. So, everything here is moving, business is happening, everything happens exactly the same way that it would happen anywhere else. But how it got there, hmm. <laughs> you know, that I think is a little bit of a struggle. Or, um, here people are emotional, hmm. business is done, you know, on emotions, hmm. like a lot of business is done yeah. that way or a lot of businesses start that way, hmm. um, based on emotions. So, we're American, we don't have many emotions hmm. <laughs> when it comes to business. Hmm. Um, so that, I think, was a learning, uh, that was a learning curve. It still is, you know, like trying to figure out some certain things that we believe that we should have paid more attention to. Hmm. Um, so that's a learning that recently just happened. Um, what happened? Oh, just, um, you know, we've lived in this bubble for mm. so long mm. um, and not really branched out or made communication with people that maybe we should have, you know, so. You mean a social that, circle? A social circle, work circle, all of it. And we're like, okay, yeah, I think we sh probably should have done that. <laughs> Where we, would you know, here, it's like, in our heads, it's like you do the job and the job is done and then it's over. Mm. Where other people, what happens is you do the job, you still meet them a week later, you meet them another week later, you stay in touch with them. Where in our heads, we're so set on this path of like, job done, move forward, next job, move forward, next job, move forward. So in that way, it was, it's been really interesting to learn this new thing. <laughs> 
And that was like a realization. You really, I mean, that's something that yeah. you understood about how to do business in this country. Yeah, yeah, you because be you have to stay in touch with everybody. Hmm. That's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so difficult. You describe yourself a bit of a loner. Is that correct? Like, is, yeah, a little. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like my sitting at home doing nothing, but I have to get out. Even my husband complains. He's like, we have to go out to dinner. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> but you have made friends though here. I have a few friends. Are they from um, the films? Are they from Bollywood as it were? There's maybe like a couple, but nobody that I'm constantly in touch with. Friends because we work together. Hmm. Friends like, uh, like here and there conversations. So a lot of my friends are not in the industry. Okay. Yeah, or a, a few. <laughs> hmm. So that's been difficult here. Connecting, making friendships, like real friendships, not hmm. like superficial ones. And you live, you live behind your friends back in the US, yeah, right? So and these are you people know. that you sort of grew up with. And yeah, I've known them for 25, 30 years, some people, but I'm never there. Hmm. So the contact is only, it can only be so much, you know what I mean? So it's been a struggle for sure in that way. What has not been, I think, a struggle in the sense of how tough it is to break into film industries across the world, but certainly in India as well, India has a much bigger population, is how you landed your first film. You, I mean, they called you to Big Boss. Firstly, did they pay you more than the winner's fee? Because that's what is said in that series, that they paid you uh, to be a participant, whereas more than what the winner would make for Big Boss. I don't know what Big Boss winner makes. Right. What did they make that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's a line in that series. That's yeah. how I remember. Yeah, no, no, I did time. give, I did yeah. give pay. <laughs> you did get paid a lot, yeah. right? Uh, um, yeah, it was for me in my head that it was a moment where I said I first did not want to go hmm. um, for many different reasons. Um, one main one was safety and, you know, worrying about how people would react when I would get there. Um, so in my head, I was like, okay, well, this is a down payment on a house. Mm. So if I go with... And your house there, yeah, obviously, there, there. right? Yeah, because I didn't see a future mm. here. Mm. I just thought of it as, okay, they want me to come on this show and great. I'm so happy about it and uh, really scared too. <laughs> at the same time and then after I come home in a week or two I can put a down payment on a house and I will I just got married so I was we were so you know like looking forward to this idea of okay this is the start of our life you know like great we're gonna be able to buy a house so or put a down payment on a house so then that was it you know was that simple. And then there's a director who comes into the Big Boss house and offers yeah. you a film. Yeah, I didn't think that was real. I mean, at that moment, I didn't right. think it was real. Because okay. I didn't even know who he was. Right. <laughs> Seriously. No. And I guess no. you don't have cell phones there. You can't even Google. Do you, do you, yeah, you yeah, can't you Google. Have, yeah, yeah. They just said this is so-and-so from, from, you know, the film industry and he's, and everybody else was going bananas in the house. <laughs> You know, going, you know, oh my gosh, this person's coming in the house. This whole buzz was happening. I'm like, okay, fine, great. I don't know who he is. So, you know, he's probably amazing. <laughs> but it was amazing. I mean, afterwards, once I finally realized. And then you got onto a film, like straight from Big Boss into what became GC2. Yeah, and right? how crazy. I was just on set with Pooja. Hmm. Sitting next to me right before she was going into the Big Boss house. Oh, the like OTT, now? Yeah, the OTT platform. Right, the, the new Big Boss. And yeah. she's entered uh, yeah. the Big Boss house. Isn't that so your, crazy? Your, your, like, your first life director. just like. Is You're sitting next circle. to her. What did you tell her? Did you tell her anything? I mean, we were, wor we were working. I had no idea that she was actually going in the house. It okay. hinted at it. Hmm. And I was trying to guess. But when she actually got up and then was going in, I was like, wow, this is <laughs> so amazing that everything just like comes like full circle of you know people you meet and how you do business and you know where people go and how you know where they land up it's amazing what was that experience like for you to be for the first time in a in a in a bollywood film i mean i had vague memories of the movie i do remember that it has an amazing soundtrack and that yeah. way Sunny, you've been very very lucky with with some amazing uh, songs right yeah I mean, that dunya people these also like the biggest one yeah. of the biggest chart busters we've had the entire soundtrack here was Excellent. What was that like? Like, were you were you feeling like like a freaking uh, fish uh, out, out of the, the water? Pond? Yeah. Yeah. 
Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, they were really nice, and we did some, like, uh, workshops and acting workshops and the dialogue and all this. Um, so in that way, they spent a good amount of time with me, mm. working with me on that, which was great. Um, but definitely a lot of things, like, I'd never been on a movie set like this mm. before. Mm. And the film sets and TV sets that I was on in the U.S., it's like another level of organizing and structure and, you know, everything's where it needs to be. You know, e even everything from costuming, you go from A to B to C, check your, co you know, like, mm. it's not like what happens here at all. Mm. It's very, very structured. And so for me, it was like watching all this happen, trying to understand it. It was, a, it was overwhelming, it was, but it was great. All you know, my time. memory of, uh, one memory of that film is there's a particular part where you're sitting there and you're, I, I think you're talking to Randeep Kuda's character, I don't remember too well, but you know, like you're heaving and you're saying, listen, uh, what I do uh, is you think it's easy, but it's not. And you're heaving, like I think you're referring to being part of the adult film industry. It's like, you think it's easy, but it's really a lot of work. Do you remember the scene? This yeah, no. I'll okay, have to watch it again. But but you know roughly what yeah, I'm talking yeah, yeah, about, yeah. right? Was that something that you that came from you to tell people that you may think this is easy because it's also there in your series about you know how you can strip yourself of the clothes, but you cannot strip yourself of the dignity, right? It's something that you you talk about yeah. even in the series. That's something that you feel strongly about, Sunny. That the way the people look at an industry and it seems damn easy, but it's really not. No, it's also a lot of work. But I'm, I think every job is like that. Mm. If you talk to any entertainer, even if, let's say, they had uh, help from family members helping them, you know, push them along the way um, through requests or whatever it is, even they can't make, you can't make a fan like you. Mm. You can't make someone buy it. They can't make them buy the ticket. So if they're succeeding, it's they're succeeding because of their hard work. Mm. You know, let's just get past a Friday, right? The hype of a film mm. and people going in to buy a ticket. But some of the actors, they're they're huge because they earned it, mm. you know, and it is not easy. You know, sometimes things are, it looks easy on the outside yeah. because, you know, we're all polished nice. Mm. <laughs> we all cleaned up nice, we did our hair, <laughs> we got makeup on, nice clothes and shoes. And then you have no idea what's going on on the background or if that person slept or not, or if they've been working nonstop and, you know, not eating properly because they just don't have the time to do it because that's what happens, you know, or... You have no idea the emotions behind, like, what's going on in their personal lives. What your day was like on that day. No, yeah. no one yeah. ever asks, hi, hi, how are you? Mm. Like, really, how are you? Yeah. And nor would that other person, that, especially an entertainer, is going to actually tell you how they feel. It's mm. not going to happen. <laughs> or at least I believe most of the time it's not going to happen because our job is to, this is the mask. <laughs> yeah. And we have to move forward and get our job done. And that's it. So, no, it's not easy. Yeah, I mean, you say hi, they don't say hi back to you anyway. Dude, so. I just want someone <laughs> to say hi back to me. Don't ignore, didn't this happen just the other day? Right? <laughs> he was there, there's my witness. I was like, she just totally ignored and walked away. You know, the other thing, of course, and, and this is in relation to your journey, and there's something that became huge in terms of a statement uh, in 2022, not by you, uh, by Mia Khalifa, okay, but she was referring to the adult film industry and about how she, find, she finds it extremely exploitative by nature, at least by her own personal experience, the fact that you, she shot only a few videos, but there are people making money from those videos, whereas she's getting nothing out of it. She didn't make anything out of it. Was that your experience of that world uh, as, as a performer and as, a, as, an, as an entertainer, as someone from show business? No, not at all. Mine is like, I work with the best of the best people. Hmm. I have no horror stories. Hmm. I read through every single contract. I corrected every single contract hmm. so that I was gaining something from it. Um, let's say the, the simple thing of I was in control of everything mm. that I was doing. And I do believe in that industry, there's different sides. Mm. Um, but from my perspective, I was in complete control. Because you were smart about it. And I saw it as a business. Mm. And I saw it as 
uh, a means to get towards something different. Mm. So it wasn't like a free for all in my world. So everybody's experiences are different. Mine was totally different. But do you understand where she's coming from? I don't know how to say it in the na in the nice way. <laughs> 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 if you read your contract, hmm. then maybe <laughs> you wouldn't be exploited because in there there are many different things. Let's say you're you, you're going to broadcast this. Hmm. Now you're going to broadcast on one platform, hmm. right? Hmm. But you also broadcast on X Y Z. You also license it out to X Y Z. You also give it to different. Um, um, advertising outlets mm. and all these different things where it can go there's one million places this interview is gonna go if you mm. want it to now if I went in on my contract and I said nope 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 this is not gonna happen because those things need to be in my control then they're in my control hmm that's just reading your contract right it's just really that simple and everybody makes it out to be out to seem like uh, so much more difficult or that they're being taken advantage of but you can only be taken advantage of if you, if you allow it them to, right. in there are certain circumstances maybe they lied to you I'm not gonna say every situation is mm. the same mm. but let's say the majority of the rule the majority of you know some of the things that people do and companies that they work for it's pretty straightforward at least the people I worked with. Right. But you know, like for instance, the work that you did, it's still there online. I can't get, you can't get rid of the internet. That's yeah. like impossible. Right. <laughs> but you should, but you should be getting something out of it in terms of a, right? I did. Your work you do. But I did, you right. know, for that amount of time, whatever I wanted from each situation, I was okay with it. Hmm. You know, it's like me telling you to limit, limit where you're going to put this interview. Right. Is that going to help me or is that going to hurt me? Hmm. Do I want you to exploit this interview? Yeah, absolutely. So then? Yeah. Okay, this is just basic business. Hmm. It's not so, it's not like some like, you know, poof like I'm being taken advantage of because you want to put it on a different platform. It works for you. It works for me. It just depends on your uh perspective of what that business is. Okay, so that's this is just one small example. Why would I want to limit you? to exploit this interview mm. why <laughs> that doesn't help me that mm. only hurts me i want you to exploit <laughs> <laughs> please <laughs> i'm but guessing people will just take parts of this interview and and run it anyway you're only going to put that exploit right as your tagline <laughs> 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 no, we're not going to be sensational about it. But I have to say, um, Sunny, this is something that's, that I think is a very new thing that's happened in India. And I want you to weigh in on this. There is a person who got in touch with me uh, a few months back. And, you know, he, he, he introduced himself as, uh, as a male star of the Indian adult entertainment industry. Uh, he wanted to be profiled. I wrote a piece on him. Oh, uh, his cool. name is Shakespeare, by the way. Uh, he's, a, he's a male. I know it's his real <laughs> name. It's not, it's not Sunny Leone. Okay. He's, his parents call him Shakespeare. Love pa him. Yeah, parents are professors of English. I think in Orissa. I mean, I was surprised by given, I mean, I've grown up here in this country, right? And given the level of shame and guilt that was attached to sex in this country growing up to a world where he was telling me, by the way, that you are in that world. It's, I think it's rel relatively underground, that world, but you are like, the, the, the inspiration because they just see how big you became yeah. uh, as a result and they're all trying to make it uh, in their own ways. Do you see that, that level of sexual revolution in this country over years but that you've been around for a decade plus yourself? Do you see a change where it's not, it's, there isn't that much shame and guilt attached where you, when you, when you even like, it's like get onto a Instagram, you know that people are pretty, you know, uh, they're comfortable with, in their skin. So I think from your point of view, you see, you see it differently. For yeah. mine, like we've spoken about, I live in a bubble. Okay. <laughs> um, and when I go out, to go meet people, mm. we don't go, so, hey, let's talk about <laughs> sex. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. They just turn around, so when she said hello, or, to leave. <laughs> or when I'm going to, like, even if it's, like, some meeting or some conference, it's not, like, something that's on, you know, the list of conversations. Mm. So I have no idea what's happening, like, mm. you know, uh, in people's homes, in, pri in private spaces, if you know, the topic of sex is okay, or do they teach their children about, you know, like sex education and all these different things? Is, is that something that is more normal now? I have no idea. 
Mm. How would I know? <laughs> um, so because I'm not part of that industry anymore, right. like for this gentleman, yes. of course he would know what's happening and, and why it's happening and if things that I've done are inspiring. Um, that's you know their perspective because they're in it. Mm. So because I'm not a part of it, I have no idea. You know, if I turn around to these people, go, hi guys, let's talk about sex. Who has their first question? <laughs> They'll go silence. Uh, <laughs> hi guys, uh, let's talk about sex. Uh, do you have a question? I'm very serious. Do you have a question? Does anybody have a question in general? You want study? Yes. yes. We have to study, but not about sex. See, I told you. <laughs> See, it's not, it's, it's not the, it's not the thing that's on people's minds. Yes. You know? Yeah. So. I mean, we're also journalists. I mean, we think about other things too. Yeah, we do yeah, think yeah. about other things. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Sunny, you know, it's so inspiring. You know, I just messaged your ex publicist Ibrahim, and I said, you know, Sunny is here, and. We, we've seen your journey in yeah. those quarters. I've seen you when you used to live in Varsova. I've seen you when you had a house in Juhu. I remember we did an interview for Midday about the most popular Indian talking about the American elections. You just came back from Cannes. And I'm very sure that a lot of people are reaching out to you. Yeah. That, Some you know, people do. Let's, so. let's work with Sunny. Now Sunny yeah. is like the next big thing. I hope so. God isn't bless it, you. <laughs> isn't it, you know, that one filmmaker who's reached out to you that you're very happy about that, you know, Maybe there's a work opportunity over there because you're. I know you're very business minded. I know you like working. Yeah. So who um, is that? So I haven't met so many people. I met a few people from Anurag Sir's camp, mm. and uh, you can call him Anurag. It just sounds okay, really fine. good. Or just call him fine. Anurag G. Anurag. Sunny G. Aap Anurag G. Okay. Ke okay. Bata so I met <laughs> I met um, people from Anurag's camp. And uh, or people that he knows, like mm. big filmmakers and ones that are the ones like, who are there would watch the film. Yeah, yeah. So I've met a lot of people like that. Um, I'm not sure like what's gonna happen in the future. I hope that you know a really cool script comes along and I'm able to, like, I guess live up to that moment. Yes. You know, I think that's gonna be the most difficult part. I think it's almost like puts you in this like category of people of different expectations mm. now which i think is going to be a little difficult but hopefully i'll make like good choices so we'll see there's a few things on the table but hopefully they'll come they up. and actually happen <laughs> you know i have to take uh, one question from you know taking off on what mohar said and this is about 2016 uh, uh you know we carried a story about you uh supporting trump right mm -hmm. and and about how like seriously, Trump? You supported Trump in 2016. I mean, you can you can choose not to answer the question because uh, your political beliefs are so. Personal. Let me just ask yeah. you about one of the last things that Biden did. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with what's happening between him and his son and having sex with underage women, and not being indicted for it, but being indicted for um, tax fraud? Is this correct? I'm talking about Trump, though. Yeah, yeah, but that I mean, was the, it. It was we, Biden we or Trump? Lesser, lesser evil. Bi Biden or Trump? Lesser evil here. I mean, he has supported. So they're related. Storm, who stormed Capitol? I mean, that's no, the, that's now just been proven. It's not true. So, are you a Trump fan? Are, are you? you uh, no, I'm. Fan? I look at the facts. <laughs> okay. I'm looking at facts. Only facts, not emotion. Like zero emotion. Do I think that Trump has a way of speaking that I don't agree? I absolutely agree. I think that the way he speaks is what deters the entire country to be against him. Absolutely, but what he's done for the country is completely different. Now, this particular situation that is happening at this very moment mm. between Biden and his son, I do not agree with. I don't agree with what's happening in this country at all. And do you agree with things so, that Trump has done? And I mean, he's a sexual offender and pretty open. Where that so, was I also mean, dropped. What was also dropped? I mean, it's between him and he said these things. Him and Stormy anyway, Daniel. <laughs> Just to put this in, uh, you know, on record, I remember the chat that we had. She didn't say she's a Trump supporter. She right. simply said that it's between devil and the deep sea, if I'm not mistaken. And she said she was very anti uh, Barack Obama's Obamacare because a large part of her brother, who's a chef, whose salary was going into, uh, you know, be, being yep. taken. He couldn't, feed himself. He, he couldn't feed himself. He couldn't feed himself. So that's okay. Hmm. It was not I'm talking about small business owners again. Or like people that fall into a certain bracket yeah, that are not so poor. Well, healthcare is a good thing, though. I mean, no, healthcare is an amazing thing. Who could, who could benefit so from other only the poor, 
the poor under need, under the poor certain are the ones who need it, the, right? Yeah. Right, exactly, yeah. and they should get it. But if my brother is able to afford his own health care, he's also being put in a bracket with no choices. Those no choices mean that I can't go shopping for another health care provider. That I'm in really good health. I don't need to see the doctor or maybe once a year for a cold or a chest infection. But other than that, I don't need to see him. But I should pay premium because I need to support Obamacare. This is a never-ending conversation. I know. It, it That's why a, we never a, should a, talk a, about a, politics. We, we're not. We're not. No. We did not we're not talking about politics. <laughs> yeah, we aren't. But for uh, my brother, I saw him suffer. I'm seeing him suffer. He works his ass off literally day in day out and a portion of his income comes right out of his check doesn't even come to him has no choices it comes right out of it to provide for obamacare and he can barely pay his bills and who has to come help him sister somebody right all i'm saying is there's a choice to be there sure. america is all about choices do you vote I do. Are you going to vote <laughs> in the next election? Of course. Election? Yeah, mail and hey, vote. By the way, um, in your passport, what is it? Is, are you Karin, uh, Karanjit uh, Kaur Vora and the, on the name on your passport? Uh, Weber, my husband's okay. name. Okay, yeah. Got it, got it. Uh, one last question. <laughs> no political questions no political at questions. all. Sorry, I broke. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We have this rule in my house. Hmm during COVID because uh, my friends were on one side. Daniel's your friends are all Dems. Huh? Are your friends all Democrats? Um, so they're, yeah, yeah. they were on one side. We're, Daniel's on another, very strong about it. And I was like, Canada, <laughs> in the middle, <laughs> going, you walk in this house, no one's talking about politics. I love you guys. You guys love us. Let's just keep it that way because it's a never ending battle. And it's all about our own personal opinions because exactly. of and, and no our one personal, ex anyway, so what are we doing? personal experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So in that way, we kept it out of our house. We should do the same thing. Well done. Today. you. This is the one that is in the series. And I thought it was a moving part. It's a very moving moment uh, about your mother, uh, about her passing away. I mean, did she really go through uh, what she did in terms of becoming an alcoholic because she disapproved of your uh, life's choices in terms of life's professional choice um, my mother became an alcoholic way before um, of my life choices mm. so she's started drinking long before that we went through a lot of crazy in our house because of you know this addiction and it was sad because you always want to think that your mother loves you more than alcohol mm. <laughs> but that it's it wasn't about that it was that it was an addiction it was something psychologically that needed to be you know repaired from the inside that had nothing to do with me or with my brother or with you know my father so was i a trigger most definitely mm. probably was a trigger mm. especially when i was always a trigger it didn't matter what i did mm. you know whether it was me maybe coming home late or maybe doing something that she didn't like it was a trigger um and then when this happened it was you know a stamp trigger <laughs> so it was not fun at all yeah there's other thing called uh, the porn star dilemma uh when you know for instance you 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 know this you are where you are for all, all your life's choices right uh and i just love the fact that you 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 own it and and as you as you must but if for instance, your kids wanted to be in the adult film industry, would you be okay with it? I think that I would have to educate them as much as possible to let them know the pros and the cons of this and let them know that maybe, you know, they'll obviously know what I've done in my life at some point. They're too young now. I made certain decisions because of whatever circumstances happen in my life. So if I can provide you with sound, good decisions where you know what you're doing and you're okay with that then i don't think i would be able to stop anybody after a certain age it, it would be their choice like i don't know they're five and seven <laughs> it's a long time from now where some of those choices will come in i think my main you know my main worry is how to get through teenage years right now mm. <laughs> that that will come up yeah. i think that will be more difficult than some of their life choices they make after 18. Sunny, you've been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Sit with Hitlist. Thank you. Yay. Subscribe to Midday India.
Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.